They are undeniably beautiful, massive releases of energy as rare elements are transmuted from one form to another, fireworks from another dimension as energy is converted from mass by the shrewdest of scientific calculations. There is certainly a lot to ponder watching these explosions, the capacity these weapons have to destroy civilized life, the arcane and brilliant series of experiments that led to their discovery. The fact that the secret of their creation is fast becoming common knowledge among dangerous and barbarian adversaries. During the period of above-ground nuclear testing, the United States put everything from trains to humans in harm's way near ground zero. Slow-motion cameras were set up to record the destruction. The devastation revealed by this footage is chilling, a photographic record of the tremendous destructive ability of the weapons wrought by a new science. So what does this have to do with art? Reading about the Manhattan Project, I was astonished by the remarkable talent and incredible resources brought together to create the first nuclear weapons. Here was a model for solving a seemingly impossible task, splitting the atom and making a tremendous weapon that would end a world war. If, with only mid-20th century technology, such a feat could be accomplished, why can't we now solve our need for clean and cheap energy? So I decided to propose a series of sculptures based on the Manhattan Project to be installed in Washington, D.C. I envision these sculptures as object lessons for the politicians. One of the Capitol's most recognized and admired monuments is this famous raising of the flag at Iwo Jima. This icon is without question the most famous example of a two-dimensional photograph reconfigured as a sculpture. What I'm proposing here is that a series of photographic images from the Manhattan Project be converted into large sculptures in the nation's capital. My thinking is that if politicians see constant reminders of a successful major national scientific effort, they will think twice before spending trillions on another debacle like the Iraq War. Energy independence is a less daunting task than building a nuclear bomb from scratch. The collective national effort that ended the war with Japan cost 23 billion in today's dollars, a fraction of what the war in Iraq is costing. This is a time for heroic innovation. We need an alternative to an endless war over energy sources. We have a rich photographic history from the Manhattan Project. This is a photograph of a plutonium apparatus with a refined plutonium core formed into a sphere. This radioactive metal is surrounded by tamper blocks, material designed to bring the nuclear core to an explosive state as the tamper blocks are added. I'd like to see a giant sculpture made from this photograph and placed next to the Capitol's west entrance, a reminder that a massive governmental effort like the Manhattan Project can produce a world-changing technology. This is a photograph of the hand of Harry Dalian, a physicist who died from a radiation accident involving the plutonium apparatus. He instinctively pushed away a tamper block after accidentally dropping it near the core, probably averting a meltdown as he took a lethal dose of radiation. I'm proposing putting a giant marble sculpture of this hand on the east side of the Capitol a reminder of the inherent dangers of nuclear technology and the heroism of Harry Dalian.
This is a photograph of refined uranium cubes at Los Alamos, the site where the bombs were made. Refining these cubes took an enormous industrial effort. I'm proposing that this photograph of the uranium cubes be turned into large, glowing blue cubes that will be situated in front of the National Cathedral. Here, the sculptures might prompt churchgoers to consider the possibility that funding energy research is a better strategy than counting on divine intervention. Harold Edgerton, an MIT engineer, was hired by the government to photograph nuclear tests in the shortest possible time span. He invented a shutter that was able to record an explosion, like this image, at a ten billionth of a second. I'm proposing taking this image, making it into a large sculpture, and placing it in front of the Lincoln Memorial. Abe would gaze out in perpetuity on a symbol of American technological dominance unimagined in his time. This elegant device was an early particle accelerator, a critical apparatus in the development of nuclear technology. I'd like to see a large stainless steel replica of this machine at the entrance of the Library of Congress. This would remind library visitors that basic research is key to scientific progress. This image was made with a standard movie camera at the Trinity test, the first nuclear detonation. This is the first few milliseconds of the nuclear era. I'm proposing that this sculpture be put in front of the National Archives building, a reminder of the instant in time when human history changed irrevocably. This image depicts witnesses to an A-bomb test sitting in Adirondack chairs as the blast goes off. They certainly deserve their place in the pantheon of iconic images from the nuclear age of discovery. Here, I've placed an industrial fiberglass copy of these loungers in front of the FBI building. Bathed in the red nuclear glow of an atomic explosion, they can forever gaze at the great blast in the distance. Perhaps the most absurd image from Los Alamos, the place the first bombs were made, is this cake celebrating the bikini tests in the Pacific. The Pentagon should be the home for a giant version of this nuclear age confection. One would hope the generals would see this as a celebratory object since it calls for a technologically derived alternative to endless war. This image of a man standing next to what looks like a stack of bricks is actually an image of the pile, the apparatus that Enrico Fermi designed to produce the first nuclear chain reaction at the University of Chicago. A bronze sculptural version of this photograph should be constructed on the White House lawn. Perhaps the fog of idiocy that got us into a rock will be momentarily lifted as the President and his advisors ponder the technology that ended World War II. The Manhattan Project is the model that proves government can solve enormous problems. Unfortunately, today's politicians are craven men and women with little capacity to understand history or comprehend the possibility of radical innovation. They need to be reminded that we have the capacity to solve big problems. They need a visual environment that reinforces a culture of competence, heroism, genius, and invention.